Oh boy, so let me tell you what, it looks like there was a lot of miscommunication from Nexon. Let me just put it this way, get your laps in while you can, boys. Check it out right here, the Valby 500 is now underway, practically 24-7, before they nerf the hell out of this famous farming spot, or infamous farming spot, however you want to word it. But yeah, we're going to dive into the new post here from Nexon right here. And we also have some teases towards some new characters that are coming up here for the first Ascendant. And we're going to be talking about ultimate reactors. It seems like the community right now is discussing how they work and how they should work because it seems like some people are disappointed in how they're actually working right now. But first, let's start out with those character teases because we have this. It says another character is on the way. Stay tuned for more details. And this one right here as well. Guess who this is? Emoji only a new character is coming soon. Stay tuned for the big reveal. I think that, of course, is Luna right there. And then I assume that this is the ultimate Valby. So that's what we're getting officially. We do know that, of course. But I think those were the teases towards that. So looks like we're going to have some grinding to do in the future as well. It seems like people are already uh, using that current farm that exists. But it's not going to exist for long. You guys may remember recently Nexon did post um, about the Valby farm and the Valby run that they wouldn't really be touching it, that they would be bringing the other farming locations up or, you know, balancing it out in that manner. And it was misinterpreted. And here is the new update about what is actually happening. Check it out here. It says, we apologize for the confusion caused by the misinterpretation during the translation process of the original Korean text. There have been no reversals of decisions and our initial statement remains that we do not intend to restrict the Valby run play style. However... As we mentioned, we aim to adjust the rewards efficiency at the Fortress Outpost to balance it with other regions. Once again, we apologize for any confusion in our mis miscommunication. We'll do our best to be as clear as possible. In other words, they're not going to be entirely getting rid of the Valby run, but they're definitely going to be nerfing it. So that's important to note. Here is what happened. So it says this misinterpreted line as it. So we would like to inform you that we're preparing a patch without completely blocking the Fortress Outpost issue and to keep allowing the players to enjoy playing like before. However, at the same time, we will update our other farming locations to match the efficiency equivalent to the Fortress Outpost. It should be this. So we would like to inform you that we're preparing a patch without completely blocking the Fortress Outpost issue and to keep allowing players to enjoy playing like before. However, at the same time, we will update the Fortress Vulcan strategic outposts to match the efficiency of other farming locations. I will say this, there is some silver lining to this. So check out this post right here under the subreddit. It says, yeah, I tried to post about this earlier, but it didn't really get any traction. I'm probably going to get downvoted, but I don't really blame them. The core issue isn't the farm itself. It's that we need more sources of gold in the game. Sounds like they're buffing that from spec ops and missions from the rest of their posts. So there will be more productive ways of getting gold anyway. If running a five minute mission gives me a good amount of gold and an M4 material, I'd rather do that 12 times than sit, than stay at an outpost, excuse me, for an hour for the same amount of gold, as long as the gold is enough for me to craft and level my modules, that is. So it seems like some people kind of understand what's going on here with the adjustments that they will be making, but as long as they're adjusting you know the whole scope of the game and making farming areas in the game more valuable that is i think a good middle ground here um for now let me know how you guys feel about it of course and then there's some people that also said this right here it says it was pretty obvious that nascar valley was too fast and that's fine it was shockingly fast when i first tried it but having spec ops have much higher increased gold is all I want. The Valby farm was very tedious and boring anyway. Also makes me dizzy. So some people were actually getting bored with it anyway. Uh, but it was always nice to have that option to run that Valby farm. But let me know how you guys are feeling about it. If you're just like absolutely gutted and devastated. But I know right now the community is kind of like in a panic. Trying to get their Valby runs in before it's gone forever. But also, I've got a question for you guys here. It says this, am I the only one who is bothered by how ultimate reactors work? Having to switch to a specific weapon every time you cast skills gets tedious very quickly. Okay, it says, 
It didn't bother me initially, but now after having played for a while, it has just become annoying. There's no skill aspect involved. It literally just means you need two keybinds to cast skills instead of one. And there's always a minor delay for actually switching weapons. I mean, sure, you can skip the switch or even use just a purple reactor and then you're losing out on a massive chunk of your damage. So that feels bad as well. What do you think? Does anybody actually enjoy this mechanic? And he has an edit here. He says, adding a bit of clarification because I see from comments that it's not exactly common knowledge. So when using ultimate reactors, you not only need to have the matching gun equipped, it needs to also be actually active in your hand. Otherwise, your skills are significantly weakened. In practice, this just means that you need to switch to your reactor gun before each skill cast. It's not even 100% obvious from the game UI that you need to do this, but once you figure it out, it's just kind of brainless extra step to casting skills. To put it into numbers, ultimate reactors give 160% skill power if you have the correct gun in hand. This is reduced massively to 100% if you have the correct gun equipped, but not in hand, so you uh, skip switching guns before casting skills. Going the quality of life route and just using a purple reactor is still quite a big reduction, 140% instead of 160%, but has the benefit of not requiring you to switch guns before casting skills. So this is definitely, I think, a needed discussion. I have been seeing this one cropping up more and more throughout the community. It seems like some people are just annoyed by this. And we got some replies here. It says, I find myself running purples Unless using Thunder Cage or Fallen Hope, definitely kind of a bummer. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they have this. Of course, I'm running Thunder Cage. I get some bonuses uh, from that as well. It's kind of like my primary weapon, but it's uh, a bummer when you switch out that weapon and you have that reduction. You know that's there. You have to constantly think about it. I do think that perhaps this needs to be revisited and adjusted for sure. Then there's this. Please add the option to restart a mission without checking the mission results. Yeah, 133 upvotes. A lot of people agree with this one. Restarting mission without waiting for 30 seconds as well. That would also be a nice change there too. Now, this is pretty cool and super helpful. It says external component stats infograph. So if you need something like this, I'll throw that in the description below as a link. So you can find this and save it on your phone or what have you if you're playing the game and you could pop that up. That should be super helpful uh, for you. Now, someone actually made a joke. says, I've lost account of how many pictures like this I've saved from this sub. Yeah, it's been super useful, damn. Also, the fact that the premium paid battle pass does not include any catalysts or activators is criminal. I have heard some people saying that it potentially will change with season one because it's kind of like considered a pre-season battle pass. I sure hope it does change. Goes on to say this right here for everyone trying to rage bait. I purchased it as I wanted to support the game. I did check it before I bought it. I saw some boosters, XB, Kuiper, etc., and thought it'd be useful. I did not have the time even know that a catalyst or activator even was. It is pretty, it is partly my fault, excuse me, for assuming the premium BP would include enhancement materials like Warframe, etc., and I'll freely admit that. And if I was to wait before I bought it, the boosters would have held less value as I would have already ranked up descendants, weapons, etc. Also, criminal, where I'm from, it's not quite as literal. It's synonymous for bad decisions, so stop getting your panties all <laughs> twisted. But I think <laughs> most people agree anyway. So that's the assessment that I see that the battle pass in itself also needs to see some improvement, especially if we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to see that for season one. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about your top comments. Remember, leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in a future video. By the way, big question, who is your main currently? Right now, I am really enjoying the play style of Valby. I had a feeling that she was going to be really badass, and just being able to whip around like that is just really cool. All right, anyway, here we go. It says, pick Viesa for her big personality, stayed for the chill element. Hell yeah. Yeah, she was my first pick as well. Because I want an ultimate weapon that does 50% more damage to the irritating balls. Yeah, that would be cool if they had like a specific bonus to that. Now it says Valby stated in the dialogue that Eugen couldn't heal himself near the end of the White Knight Gulch missions. Now that is confusing. Now it says every descendant needs an intro quest that shows players the character's unique trait. If any, like getting Sharon unlocked, they send you to do an outpost mission and completes upon stealth completion. Then people might respect the character's abilities or see what they are trying to do. Yeah, it's kind of strange how it's, I guess you would say, somewhat hidden as well, uh, which is very strange. So 
Yeah, there's just some oddities that I think that they could adjust, especially when we're talking about new players that come into the game that are going to be very, very new. They might want to consider tapping into some light tutorials about those elements of the characters and let people know more about that. Also, we have this. They need to add a hands-on tutorial for things that aren't explained. Yes, totally agree. And yet again, every single video, you guys always mention being able to paint your base skin, your base outfit. They need to add that in bad things. As I wish, they would add more filter options for selecting junks. Besides item rarity and level, we should also have the option to select target substats and the rarity of those substats. 100% agree. All right, so there it is. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned here for more first Ascendant news and updates. I have you guys covered as always. Looking forward to seeing what they do in this early August update. And curious to see how everyone reacts to the nerf. And, you know, of course there's like a nerf going on, but there's also a buff at the same time with certain locations. So hopefully it all balances out and it doesn't like harm the, the community too much. I don't think it will, honestly. Um, we'll see though. <laughs> You never know. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more and I will see you all next time. Take care.